Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria assures investors their investments are safe in the country. Nigeria's stock market maintains weekly gains as lockdown eases. Afri Exim Bank cancels 2020 annual meeting side event due to COVID-19. Welcome to Business Express. We are reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams. The Governor Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Mr. Godwin Emefele, has assured investors of the security of their investment in the country, despite dwindling revenue from the sale of crude oil globally. Speaking at the weekend in Abuja, Mr. Emefele said investors interested in repatriating their funds from the country were guaranteed to do so noting that the bank had put in place policies to ensure an orderly exit for those that might be interested in doing so. Speaking on the plans of the bank in tackling the economic impact of the COVID-19, he said the CBN, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, was committed to galvanizing the manufacturing sector in a bid to reset the economy. Nigeria has one opportunity to reset again. And to say that as we start a new a new journey towards development, towards economic industrialization of a country, that Nigeria should join the race. And perhaps this is a good opportunity for us to see through that we prepare ourselves as a country in Africa, the largest economy, to get our manufacturing sectors to work, to get our banking sectors to work efficiently to support economic growth and development, so that by the time African continental free trade zone arrangement comes on stream, Nigeria will be adequately prepared. I watch on television that AFCFTA starts again January 2021. And so, what do we do as a country? And that's why we think we should galvanize the manufacturing sector, the health sector, to prepare and then get our factories back, create jobs. Let us begin to see the fumes coming out of the rooftops of the manufacturing companies so that we can be adequately prepared for the battles ahead. A child of necessity to wade off coronavirus is the making of face masks. The massive global demand is challenging and Nigerians have been going the extra mile to meet local demand. Let's join Olayin Kaojo on surviving COVID-19. one of the NYIC Skills Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development Center, where youth core members who chose the skill of fashion designing during the orientation course are bringing it to bear. From cutting to sewing, then screen printing, the only thing that is not done in this site fashion center is the production of the fabric. At this center, these core members, as part of their contribution to the fight against COVID-19, are producing face masks made of cotton materials for the Federal Capital Territory Administration. The minister came out to give us a mandate to produce 10,000 face masks for the SCTA. Since the production of face masks has been described as the new oil at the times we are in, this graduate of mass communication from Kogi State University, Esther Gbenro, says. Um, by the time we finish this thing and we get to give it out to people, it's going to be a great thing, a great thing of joy for me. Because reaching out to people and making sure people are protected from this um, pandemic is um, one thing that I really want to achieve. Of what quality and standards are the face masks? 
Following our, our meeting with the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, we are privileged to have our face masks uh, tested in the standard organization of Nigeria Lab. After meeting the targeted number, the youth corps members who are serving in the FCT will be presenting the face masks to the Federal Capital Territory Administration for onward distribution. Nigerians spent more than 22 trillion naira on food in 2019. The figures released at the weekend by the National Bureau of Statistics indicate that the largest amount of the purchases were on food consumed outside homes. Musa Baba Aliu has a breakdown of the statistics. This is the first time in 10 years that the National Bureau of Statistics is releasing consumption expenditure of Nigerians. The figures released by the Bureau 24 hours ago indicate that the total household expenditure hits more than 40 trillion naira on food and non-food items. The breakdown shows that 22.3 trillion naira was spent on food, that is about 57% of the total spending on consumption, while the sum of 17.43 trillion naira went on non-food expenditures. The survey indicates that 4 trillion naira was spent on food consumed at eateries, including bars, roadside joints, and cafeterias. Further analysis of the food expenditure highlights that 2.52 trillion naira were spent on tubers and plantains, rice, 1.9 trillion naira, vegetables, 1.7 trillion naira, and beverages, 296 billion naira. The Bureau also disclosed that 551.2 billion naira was spent on non-alcoholic drinks, 205.5 billion naira on sugar, sweet and confectionaries, and 150.3 billion naira on alcoholic drinks. At least assume somebody has a very little money of 1,000 naira. And now that money can be able to afford it, something like three modules of that in the market. And you, a lady, if you are being lazy, you cannot go to the market and estimate that money very little to get a very quantity of food that you cook and you went and carry it. You go to a restaurant, you spend nothing less than 900 or even at all, the whole of that 1,000 naira. You discover that the food they have been supplying for us, they are not being supplied the food. So the people that have it at home, they now increase the price. Just like last time I went to the market, I bought uh, the, a modu of garlic was uh, 150. But later on, we'll not go to 200, we'll be to 250, 300, 300 naira. A model of rice also, the local rice, that is Nigeria rice we are buying, it was 300 naira. Some of the naira is taken to what, 400 naira to 600 naira. The consumption pattern also showed that Nigerians spent a total of 2.46 trillion naira on health, 2.3 trillion naira on education, 2.2 trillion naira on telephone, and 2.11 trillion naira on house rent. Thank you very much, Musa Baba Aleo. To look at issues around COVID-19 and Nigeria's productivity is Don AKCOB, an agro expert and consultant. He is also the MD of Farm World Technologies. You're welcome to the program. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Don, uh, COVID-19 has caused a whole lot of damages to Nigeria's economy to the point that the 2020 budget has had to be reviewed twice. What are your thoughts on what government needs to do at this particular point to raise enough revenue for funding? Well, it's a pity that um, our budget has to be reviewed twice because of funding. It's also a pity that um, our oils are roaming the high seas without buyer. Having said so, um, I remember there was a time some governors celebrated the court verdict that the money saved should be, be, should be shared. And that is the, one of the consequences what we are seeing today. But having said that, we should um, uh, consider borrowing. Borrowing is not a pleasant thing, but if the money is to be borrowed and properly channeled to a project, a project that we pay itself over time, then they can try that. It's misuse or misapplication of such, uh, such fund will be catastrophic economically and will be a burden to the next generation financially. The government, on the other hand, since they are looking inwards 
I don't know how many countries that have not been affected by, by coronavirus. Since that we're talking about looking inward now, they have to look into the port. Nigerian port is uh, second the largest uh, revenue earning for the government. So they have to concentrate there. Inside there, there are a lot of money, a lot of containers that are trapped. Some one year, two years, three years, six months, four months. Reason, the same. What are those reasons? Companies, manufacturers, uh, traders, some of them, they imported that goods. They don't have so much money for, for some of the manufacturers. They don't have so much money. They imported the, their raw materials. When it arrives, they will pay all the duty, pay the VAT, pay the shipping company, pay the terminal company. And they got in their TDO and DO to load. It will take them four weeks to three weeks, sometimes three weeks, four weeks, for the truck to come in. By the time the truck came in, they have to start all over again. The charges, they have to start all over again. There will be accrued charges. And the charges they are going to be charged, maybe more than the first one, they have paid. So there is no money. So you can see now that those containers that are there are forced, unintended or artificial abandonment. So for government to come in and do a kind of palliative, most of the, most of the money that we realize there is huge. Government can rake in a lot of revenue if they intervene by giving a 60 days moratorium, 60 days evacuation emergency, asking people to come and collect your containers, asking manufacturers to come and collect their raw materials. Now, but so, sorry, I let's, would have, let's, I would let's, let's, me, let's, let's, let's get, let me, let's let get me, this let me straight. What is the real I am cost coming of this? To, I am coming to the benefit. I'm coming to the benefit. When those people come to pay, I would have said, government, allow them to carry this thing free without paying anything. I say palliative to that sector. Because palliative has given to other sectors, yes. but has not given to the SME whose goods are trapped in the port. Don't forget that government all over the world I learned some government have taken over paying of salaries to companies for six months, one year, so that staffs cannot be retrenched or followed. So that staff cannot be retrenched, so that a uh, 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 tumor cannot be created in the economy. They are doing it. But I will not ask our government to ask people not to pay tax and VAT. The only thing they will do is to pay VAT, pay tax, collect their containers. Shipping company and terminal companies and terminal, uh, terminal concessionaires should be compelled to waive 98% of demolages. Because why? They have overexploited Nigerians. They have cheated Nigerians. Tell me, an importer that it takes four weeks to bring his goods, to come and carry his uh, container, is it his fault? It's not his fault. Why are you charging him? For one container, you charge him five times. It happens. We have evidence here and there. Okay, okay, so okay, okay, sir. the Come benefit, now the, let the me talk about the benefit. The, okay. benefit. the benefit of this government intervention, one, they should rake in billions, if not trillions of money in terms of revenue. When this from trade, the ports. From the port. If the traders come in order to maximize the opportunity of evacuation, emergency, they come and evacuate their containers, government will rake in a lot of money. The benefit also goes to the bank. A lot of banks have bad debt because of those containers that are trapped in the port. Most of the manufacturers that have even sacked their workers, okay, we, 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 we no longer sack. Okay, with, with all these challenges on ground, talking about exports, we've, we've reached out and there's time. this is time for us to actually look inwards. If we're also thinking of exporting what we have to outside, uh, outside this country and, you know, foreign exchange is key, what do you think, what monetary policy do you think can be on ground for us to have a robust foreign reserve? Having a foreign reserve is not a, a robust a, a, It's not a, a rocket science. There are things you need to do before you have, you grow um, your foreign exchange. One of them is to be industrialized. You have a robust industrial sector that will be manufacturing and be exporting. In that case, you get uh, adequate foreign exchange to beef up your foreign exchange so that more pressure will be released from the oil in case it pick up tomorrow. 
Okay, what do we then do now with all the challenges you've tabled now in terms of looking inwards, in terms of diversifying, in terms of moving away from the mono economy that has been so dependent on oil and gas? I can say that we can still get it right because uh, nobody, no country will come to develop our economy. It is something we can do by ourselves. Right now, as we are facing problems, they are running back to their country. Okay? So, we, the owners of the country, will build our economy. So, coming to the area of building our economy, the, the central bank governor, kudos to him, through the instrumentation of uh, the central bank governor and the listening president, they have come up with the right policy that blended with practice in agriculture. They have gotten the policy right in agriculture. I am telling you, in the next two years, three years, Nigeria will be self-sufficient in agriculture. Okay? And since you have, we are talking about diversification now, there are one or two things they need to do for their effort not to have problems. I'm foreseeing a situation where we have bumper harvest here and there. And uh, there will be post-harvest losses. They should be proactive in providing post-harvest infrastructure in different geopolitical regions of Nigeria. That is one. For them to get Nigeria be competitive, as you have asked me, we are talking about diversification now. Yes. To get Nigeria to be competitive in export, in packaging, in manufacturing, I would suggest to the government to set aside two to three billion dollars. That money should be called manufacturing, manufacturing fund, industrial manufacturing fund. For you to assess that money, it will be through the tower of credit. It will be only for industrial machinery, processing, ma processing machinery, packaging machinery, okay? Purely for manufacturers. And the exchange rate will be 300 naira. By the time he does that, you see people now thinking, should I continue importing, what I'm, uh, importing this item since I can now assess fund at this rate and start my own factory, manufacturing it here? We have learned enough. COVID-19, apart from the debt, is a great teacher. Okay, with, with these funds you are proposing, I think the, the Nizam Bank is already doing that. There is a, a 50 billion Naira basket fund that has been distributed to states as well as manufacturers. Well, on a last note, now what advice do you have for the present leadership and the, the, the much more to come? for us to actually do the needful to grow our economy as fast as we can so that we survive post-COVID-19. The advice I have to them have already been listed. Some of them have been listed. One, um, in diversification, they should not think of only agriculture. We have solid mineral. I want to make an important comment in this solid mineral. There are solid mineral, some, uh, 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 tomarine, which you can get five gram, and is five million dollars. Five gram. Five gram. Five, five million. million dollars. Gold, silver, diamond, all of them. Nigeria is uh, uh, one of the largest uh, deposits well, on, on that. Mr. So, Don, aka COB, agro expert, it's been a pleasure for you sharing your thoughts with us on this very sensitive issues just like we you said and uh, nigerians are also listening government is also listening diversification in the agriculture particularly solid minerals is the way to go for now well this is business express reaching you from abuja the program continues after this break <laughs> Let me assure Nigerians that all COVID-19 intervention funds are safe in the Treasury single account and that government is still open to donations in this regard. Government has opened special accounts with five commercial banks which are directly linked to the Treasury single account. Donated funds are safe in the Central Bank of Nigeria. For verifiable information about the funds and other financial obligations of the federal government, 
please contact us directly at the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. The account details for the donations are as follows. Stocks remain upbeat in the week ended Friday the 8th of May 2020 as market adjusts to COVID-19 and its attendant implications. Let's join Amina Nujaim for the weekly outlook. The stock market report for the week ended May 8, 2020 indicated that there was a total turnover of 1.662 billion shares worth 18.205 billion naira traded in 28,791 deals. The NSC OSHA index appreciated by 4.45% to close the week at 24,045.40 basis points, while market capitalization stood at 12.531 trillion naira. All other indices finished higher, with the exception of NSC ASM, which depreciated by 0.18%. The financial services industry led the activity chart with 1.385 billion shares valued at 11.813 billion naira traded in 17,117 deals, contributing 83.35% and 64.89% to the total equity turnover volume and value. The services industry followed with 53.551 million shares worth 128.065 in 1,003 deals. The third place was the consumer goods industry with a turnover of 53.444 million shares in 3,607 deals. Now trading in top three equities, FBN Holdings PLC, Guaranteed Trust Bank, Zenith Bank PLC accounted for 774.294 million shares worth 9.796 billion naira in 7,516 deals, contributing 46.59% and 53.81% to the total equity turnover volume and value. Exchange traded products at 17,476 units, valued at 1.502 million traded in 10 deals. Now, bonds had a total of 2,438 units, valued at 2.594 million naira that were traded in 6 deals. In the price movement chart, 39 equities appreciated in price, 20 equities depreciated in price, while 102 equities remained unchanged. That's the stock market reports. Okay, Nigerian equities were off to a slow start as the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed the first trading day of the week on a negative note. The All Share Index depreciated by 0.39% to close at 23,950.83 basis points with market capitalization at 12.4 trillion naira. 207 million shares valued at 1.7 billion naira traded in 4,460 deals at the end of the session. FBN Holdings, Guarantee Trust Bank, and Regal Insurance were the most active stocks, while Unilever, Adova, and C&I Leasing led the gainers. Global stocks have had impressive runs, despite weaker earnings and increased job losses. However, they failed to maintain steam this Monday. Bossed Abel takes it from here. Investors continue to watch for developments on the coronavirus front amid hopes of global economies reopening as social distancing measures are eased. Africa's stock market began early trading for 11th May mixed, with Ghana's GSA Composite and Tunisia's Tunidex posting gains. European stocks traded in positive territory as lockdown lifting continued throughout the continent. Stocks in Asia traded higher as hopes rise on economies reopening, even as the U.S. reported job record losses in April. Hansen Index led gains among the region's major markets as it surged 1.53%. Nikkei topped 1.05% in 
afternoon trade, while the Shanghai Composite dipped 0.02%. U.S. stock futures rose after Wall Street posted consecutive rallies to end last week amid the prospect of the global economy reopening soon. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures traded 88 points higher, implying a Monday opening gain of about 455 points. S&P 500 and Nasdaq futures also pointed to a positive open. With that, we come to the end of this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTA's channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter and the handle is NTA News Now. Don't forget to use the hashtag, it's BizX. Remember to intermittently wash your hands with soap under running water as the world battles COVID-19. Be safe out there. Business Express returns on Wednesday. I am Benny Adams saying stay safe.